Hi, I'm Regina Brazo with Be The Math, and this is my son Samuel, and we're here to talk about Zoom. The first thing you want to do is search in your search engine for Zoom, and it pulls up this screen. So when the screen comes up, you'll want to sign up. It is free, so once you hit sign up, you'll have a few different options. You can sign up in Zoom, or you can sign up with Google, which that's what we're going to do today. So, with signing up, you'll have a couple different options. It just depends on which email you want to use. We're using Be The Math. And sometimes it takes it a minute to pull up your account. And once it pulls up, you have some settings that I recommend you change. So over here on the side, click settings. And you've got um, host of meetings. And this one starts your meetings with video on if you want to record them every time. Um, you can schedule uh, what audio type. Join before the host. That would be if they wanted to log in before you, and I don't recommend that. And then uh, this is a password protected. You really want to leave the password alone because of the fact that we're meeting with students, that having that password keeps it a lot more uh, secure. And then uh, mute participants upon entry. That one is usually turned off. And so you want to go ahead and turn that on because the feedback from them coming in with their microphones on and siblings in the background is pretty loud. And then uh, having chat, you can prevent them from saving it. So if they're chatting and you don't want them to do it, you can turn that prevention on. Um, you can auto save them. It tells you if they leave if you want it to, you can turn that on. And then uh, there's one more right here. When you're uh, sharing, you can decide that, you know, if you want to be the only person that can share your screen or if you want to allow the students to share theirs. And then it also has the whiteboard and it will auto save if you want it to. You just have to turn that on. And so the rest of these settings, they're, you know, you can customize them for yourself. Don't be afraid to look at them and just see. Okay. And so. So now we're going to go to host a meeting. So when you want to host a meeting, you'll have three different options. It's going to be with video off, with video on, and screen sharing only. So we're going to do it with video off as of right now. And once it loads, this part, if you're just now using on your first PC, it might ask you to do an install of Zoom, and it'll be down here on the running bar. You hit, hit install, and it might take you a few minutes. And then you'll open up Zoom meetings. And once you do that, it'll connect. And sometimes it does. Um, take it a second to connect. For a minute. <laughs> there we go. So now, once you come up to this, this is where you can start inviting other people to join your meeting. So here's a, there's a couple different options you can do. So with invite other, you will have a few different options. On first, you can use your iPhone or iPad or Chromebooks and you'll have to go get an app. The app is going to be blue with a white video camera inside of it. And once you download the app, you'll open it up and you'll have three different options. It's going to be join a meeting, sign up, or sign in. And you don't have to sign in or sign up if you already have the... ID number and password. So first, with the ID number and password, you'll enter in, the ID number is gonna be a nine digit up here on this top bar. And you'll 
hit join and on on your iPad iPhone you can decide what you want to name your name yourself and I'm gonna name myself Samuel my name and once it goes through a little bit it'll ask for a password and the password is gonna be down here in the bottom corner and it's gonna be a six digit password You'll hit join and it will take you straight on in and you might want to watch it she did turn on mute as they join in sometimes it might not do that for some reason and once I get connected it shows two participants and it's gonna ask if you want to use Wi-Fi assist basically it's just telling you you're on a Wi-Fi based app you're gonna have to let it use it Okay, the other way to invite is through Gmail and, or whatever emails you use. And so whenever I do this, it's going to open a new tab, but it's going to give us a default email. So if you have a network and you're emailing all of your students or you have a group message, it comes up with the information for your Zoom meeting. If you click this link on your device, it takes you straight to the meeting. And then here's the meeting ID and password again. So I'm going to invite him on his Chromebook. On his PC, I'm sorry. We don't have a Chromebook here. We're going to invite him on his PC. And so all I did was type in his address and click send and it sent that to him. And you can type, you can edit that. You can type in, um, you know, this is our information for our meet. You can put the times, whatever you need to there. And so now it's launching my meeting for some reason again. We're having a little bit of rain, so for some reason it keeps dropping our connection, but that's okay. I think we'll be all right. All right, so here's the next thing with so, his Chromebook. PC. So PC. when I get the email, <laughs> I'll open up my email and right as it showed up on on her, it'll show a little web address. web address and you just click on the web address and it will literally take you all the way through to the meeting. You don't have to enter in the password, the ID or anything. You'll just have to tell it to open Zoom and once you do that, it might take it a minute, but it will take you right on in. All right, and then once your participants are there, if you move your mouse, it shows you. Right now, there's only two that have connected. And so the other thing we want to show you is the whiteboard. And so if you click share screen down here at the bottom, it comes up to the basic things that you can share. And we want to share the whiteboard. And so you either can double click it or click the whiteboard and click share. What's neat about this is you can see on Samuel's phone that he's seeing the whiteboard here. And I can write. So as she's writing, it'll catch up with my phone. And also it will catch up with my laptop. And so you have different features on your whiteboard. You can um, clear the whole thing, and that'll just clear all drawings, and that just takes off the screen. If you're writing and you, sorry, draw, and you, and you mess up, and you wanted that to be a five, and you can't write over it, it has an eraser where you can erase it and put whatever it is you need to on your whiteboard. Right now, I have my video off. It is not recording mine. Now, uh, to turn it on, you would have to turn that on in your original meeting before you shared the whiteboard. Okay? And so... Uh, so, going into ending the meeting, some if, you tell, if your students are ready to leave or something and they go off and leave, they just go up to the top corner and say leave. But then it also, once you get off your whiteboard, it also will catch up and tell you how many people are on, your part how many participants you have. And if you have a number of students, 
then you'll be able to know if you have all your students on or not. And then if you're the host and you're trying to get out of the meeting, you just hit the close button up top and that's going to, you want to end the meeting for all and when you click end meeting for all, it's just going to take them out of the meeting as well. And so, see, it took them out, and the meeting has been ended. Is that what it says? Yep. Okay. So, we hope this helps a little bit with Zoom. Um, we enjoy it. The whiteboard seems to work pretty well. So, with Zoom's little basic plan that they have, you have a 40-minute video recording that you can do, and you can only have up to 100 people at a time inside the Zoom. Yes, and that's the free service that they offer. All right. Thank you for watching.